All right, let's get this week going with Exodus chapter 34. And the Lord said unto Moses, Hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first, and I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first tables which you break. And be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai, and present yourself there to me in the top of the mount. And no man shall come up with you, neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount, neither let the flocks nor herds feed before the mount. And hew two tables of stone like unto the first, and Moses rose up early in the morning, and went up into Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand two tables of stone. And the Lord descended in the cloud, and stood with him there, and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him, and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Remember how we left off last time, he was going to put him in the cleft of the rock, cover him up, pass by, let him see his back parts. I guess this is what's going on. He's proclaiming the name of the Lord. It says he keeps mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. You heard of generational curses? Right there is where it comes from. But bless God, you get in Christ Jesus, you're part of a brand new generation. And nobody can curse what God's blessed. Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshipped. And he said, If now I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us, for it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for thine inheritance. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant. Before all thy people I will do marvels, such have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation, and all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord, for it is a terrible thing that I will do with ye. Terrible, that word means fearful, dreadful upon all these people he's going to run out here. He said, Observe thou that which I command thee this day. Behold, I drive out before you the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Hivite, the Perizzite, the Hittite, and the Jebusite. Take heed to yourself, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land where you go, lest it be for a snare in the midst of you. He's telling them this, knowing that that's exactly what's going to happen, but he warns them. He says, But ye shall destroy their altars, break down their images, cut down their groves. That's where they worshipped all their idol pagan gods. He says, For you shall worship no other god, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous god says, uh, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a-whoring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods, and one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice. They've already shown that they're willing to do this. They made a golden calf and sacrificed to it. it. says, and you take of their daughters to thy sons, and their daughters go a-whoring after their gods, and make your sons go a-whoring after their gods. Thou shalt make thee no molten gods. The feasts of unleavened bread you shall keep. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, as I commanded you in the time of the month Abib. For in the month Abib you came out of Egypt. All that opens the matrix is mine. That's the firstborn of everything. It's all God's. He says, the firstling among the cattle, whether ox or sheep that is male, but the firstling of an ass you shall redeem with a lamb. And if you redeem him not, then you shall break his neck pretty hard that makes me think though probably had something to do with you remember when jesus it's finally time and he comes riding down into jerusalem what did he ride in on a donkey and he's the lamb he redeemed it it had never been rode on had it he redeemed it as the lamb praise god redeemed us as the lamb great picture there it says uh, six days all right, after the firstborn of thy sons you shall redeem, and none shall appear empty before me. Six days you shall work, but on the seventh day you shall rest. In earring time and in harvest you shall rest. And you shall observe the feast of weeks or the of the first fruits of wheat harvest and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. Thrice in a year shall all your men children appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. For I will cast out the nations before you and enlarge your borders. Neither shall any man desire your land when you go up to appear before the Lord thy God thrice in a year. So they got to leave wherever they live at and go to Jerusalem. He's saying, your, 
you know, don't don't worry about leaving. Everything's going to be all right. Nobody's going to desire to come in and try and take everything you got what time you're gone. He says, uh, Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven, neither shall the sacrifice of the peace of the Pass peace, feast of the Passover be left unto morning. The first of the first fruits of your land you shall bring unto the house of the Lord your God. You shall not see a kid in his mother's mill. So don't, you know, take a kid of the goats, dress it up to fix it to eat, and then turn around and boil it in its mother's mill. Something to that, I guess. I don't really know. Anyway, he says, The Lord said unto Moses, Write these words, for after the tenor of these words, I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. And he was there forty days and forty nights. He did neither eat nor drink water. Forty days and forty nights. So that was definitely a supernatural happening. Well, you can't go that long without water, as far as I know. It says, He wrote upon the tables the, wrote, the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And it came to pass when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of the testimony in his hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moses wist not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. And that something happened to Moses' face, his skin, when he's in the presence of God. And the people see it, and it freaks them out. When Aaron, his brother, own brother, says that, when Aaron and the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. And afterward, all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them the commandment, all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. Until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. So that, that glory, the glory of God, pretty much, is what everybody thinks was shining on Moses' face. Because remember, he said, show me your glory. And he passed by and he showed it to him, his back part. But still, that was enough to change the man's looks and he was freaking everybody out so he puts this veil over his face and actually paul refers to this in some of his writings talking about you know he was jewish too and he's talking about that veil makes it kind of an allegorical thing he says the veil that's over their heart talking about israel is still there every time they read the old testament because they still don't get it they still not had that veil removed to see the glory of god which is jesus but they will one day he says, And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Mo Moses' face shone, and Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went and spoke, spoke with the Lord, I guess. It's until he went in to speak with him. So I guess he's talking about God there. But that's it. That is it for chapter 34. Show up tomorrow, and we'll do 35. God bless you.